the snow pusher or the snow plow? Which one's better? Which one do you need? Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today, we're talking about a topic that is something I'm asked all the time, especially this time of year, the snow pusher versus the snow plow. Let's go over those strengths and weaknesses. Yes, each of them have strengths and weaknesses. We'll give you price points, what they're good for, construction design, all that good stuff. If you'd be so kind, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video to get more informational videos like this one here. If you're in the market for a tractor, an attachment, an accessory, or maybe a whole package, check out that description below, all sorts of helpful links down there, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Let's get to it. Let's talk about price for a minute here. In most situations, the snow pusher is gonna end up being a little bit cheaper than a snow plow. However, that can vary, and I do actually have a very price competitive snow plow here from Tar River. It's available in 60, 72, 84, and 96 inch sizes or widths there for compact tractors. This one that you see here on a Kubota L6060 is gonna be an 84 inch variant. You can also get a 96 inch for this machine that'll be a good fit for it as well. Over here on the 4066R, you're gonna see an HLA 2500 series 72 inch wide snow pusher. Some options to consider that will affect pricing. On the snow pusher, there's not gonna be any hydraulic options, so nothing to worry about there. On a snow plow, however, you can get that set up with a manual angle or an optional hydraulic angle for an additional cost. That is also gonna require additional hydraulic capabilities on your tractor as well, so keep that in mind. The cost can really start to add up if your tractor isn't already equipped with those additional hydraulics. On a snow pusher, some considerations to take into mind are gonna be something like a back drag right here. You can get it with or without the back drag. And if you're going to get a back drag, you can add on a replaceable edge if you want to, make it a replaceable steel, rubber, UHMW. You have a lot of options there to consider, but keep that in mind, with or without, and then your edges as well are gonna drive the cost. Now, I love these Tar River snow plows. They are well built. I did a comparison last year comparing a Tar River snow plow versus the Frontier snow plow, for example, and the amount of steel that is in the structure back here that's behind the actual pushing blade itself is just incredible. There's way more material here than what's on a lot of other snow plows, and when you're plowing along you want to have the weight to get the momentum going and you also want to have that rigidity that structure there that strength to allow you to go through whatever you need to do to get the job done if we take a closer look right here you're going to see two beefy trip springs one on either side here that are just very substantial in case you do hit a lip or an edge and you need to have that uh, release right there that's what that's going to be for you'll also see you have a skid shoe down here with shims that are adjustable one on the other side as well you're also going to have mounts one right here and one tucked underneath here to add on a hydraulic cylinder if you want to it comes standard in the piece of equipment now i love these hla snow pushers as well for a lot of reasons i've gone into a lot of depth about it they really stand apart from what else is on the market today including the huge back rate that's on here this big black piece of steel right here actually entirely closes off the top of the um, the snow pusher on the smaller models once you get to a 25 500 series you're still going to have roughly a 13 inch piece of steel right here that is way more substantial than the competition which is typically a three or four inch piece of steel to grab and accumulate all that snow in there on the inside you're going to see there's no cross braces in here at all you have a double panel sidewall construction that also welds right into a radius back on here so that radius back helps uh, propel the snow forward keep it rolling forward so it doesn't stick there nothing wants to get trapped more of the snow is going to be released with this design some other great features included are going to be adjustable skid shoes so you can adjust them up and down if you want to get just above that plowing surface and not scrape your gravel off the driveway you can also add on a replaceable cutting edge if you want to to the back drag and of course the frame that attaches to your tractor whether it's a john deere quick attach it could be a skid steer quick attach it could be a global we can even get custom mounts if you even have a pinned on bucket all of those frames are going to be bolted onto the back of the snow pusher that way if you end up with a different piece of equipment down the road you don't have to buy an entirely new snow pusher just get a new frame bolt it up and away you go so let's talk about requirements what's needed for you besides having the piece of equipment here whether it's the plow or the pusher well with a snow pusher it really doesn't get any easier because all you have to do is hook it up take your bucket off all right take your bucket off or your forks or your grapple connect to the front end of your loader the snow pusher and away you go over here on the snow plow you do the same thing all right if you have a manual angle Take your bucket off your forks all you do is hook it up if you're going to have a manual angle again at that point you are going to have to hop off the tractor anytime you want to adjust the angle this way adjust it that way you got to pull a couple pins out 
you know, rotate it around, put the pins back in and lock it in place. However, if you do have the optional hydraulic angling kit that you can add on to this system right here, you can plug it in if you have the hydraulics on your tractor and then you can operate everything right up there from your operator station. For me though, I love simplicity and that ranks really high on my priority list. And so that's where I really appreciate the simplicity of the HLA snow pusher or snow pushers in general. There's nothing else to worry about. No angling anything, no hydraulics, no electric. You just put it on there and away you go. Let's talk about how this equipment carries the load. So over on a snow pusher, as you're collecting and accumulating snow, it's basically doing it in an even amount, you know, dispersing it all throughout here and capturing it, you know, wherever it falls, but it's just going to accumulate in there and trap in there evenly. Now, if you think about a snow plow, whether it's a big old one or a small one, you have your plow angled. You're never really using your plow perfectly straight on. So the load is constantly sweeping to one side. And when you have your load sticking out as far as it is like this, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to try to steer your machine when you have a load, especially on lighter machines, on smaller machines, your, your subcompacts and your smaller compacts that don't have a lot of weight. When that snow is constantly pushing to one side and you're having to combat that by steering this way in the front end of your tractor is sometimes wanting to lift up because of the amount of snow it's pushing. So you're already a little bit limited on traction to begin with and you're compounding that by having that off-center load. And one other thing to keep in consideration is the fact that, you know, your plow face here on the pusher is sitting closer to the loader arm. So it's closer to your machine, it's gonna allow you to maintain better control. As you can see over on the plow right here, your plow face is significantly further away from your the base of your loader arms here. So what that does is it makes it a little bit harder to control, a little bit harder to steer and get leverage with your machine. Now keep in mind, we're talking about loader mounted plows. You can get frame mounted plows for certain machines, but for me that defeats the entire purpose why you have a loader on there. Most of us that have loaders on our tractors need to be able to use them year round. And so if you get a frame mounted plow, that means you have to remove your loader and then install all the hardware and the quick attach system and everything else to use the plow. So getting something for your loader is going to be a lot more effective for most of us that we have to use a grapple in the wintertime or a bale spear or a bucket or pallet forks or something else along those lines. Let's talk about the types of snowfall that these attachments can handle. And that's going to be pretty easy. Pretty much everything that you can throw at it, whether it's a small amount, just an inch or two that you want to clean up so it doesn't turn into an icy mess. Or if you have 12, 18 inches, I know some of you guys just got 30 or 40 inches any piece of snow removal equipment is going to struggle with that. So you're just making do if you get a monster mega storm, you know, that's 30 or 40 inches of snow, you're just doing what you can to keep up. It doesn't matter if it's the light fluffy stuff, it could be the wet heavy stuff. These hunks of steel right here are going to take that snow and move it wherever you want to. One of the great features about this back drag is the fact that if you have a big building like this, or it could be a garage, or it could be a retaining wall even, some place where you can't push snow, whether it's a pusher or a plow, you can go up to that surface there, rock this whole piece of equipment forward like you're going to dump your bucket out, and then this right here becomes your scraping edge or your plow edge, and you can go up to that that wall or that face and pull the snow away. It's going to be all trapped inside this box there, so it's very easy to do and very efficient to do. One of the big questions I'm asked is, I have a long drive, what do you recommend? Or I have a big parking lot, or I have a big landing area, or maybe I have both. What do you recommend as the right piece of equipment for me? If we take everything we've learned so far from the strengths and the weaknesses of each one of these pieces of equipment, my money goes to the snow pusher. However, you gotta make your own decision. If you have a long drive, all right, say six or 800 foot, I sell both, okay? I sell pushers and plows. Plows, I guess, are more common, right? They've been around longer. You see a lot more of them out there. So that's kind of where people tend to gravitate towards. It doesn't mean it's the right solution for everybody. Let me give you an example. I've been in a few locations, even my current place where I live right now, where I've used a snow plow on the front of a garden tractor. If you have an unrelenting winter where the snow just keeps coming, guess what? You can only plow so often to the side before you're gonna have to stack it somewhere anyway. Otherwise, your driveway is gonna continuously close in on you and get narrower and narrower because that plow is not going to go ahead and just keep dumping it over the top. There's just nowhere for it to go. So at some point, and you're better off doing this early on, is pushing that snow back periodically in sections off the driveway to the locations that you can. Even if you have a 600 foot plus long driveway, you're going to have these same problems versus if you have a 25 foot long driveway. You have to have some place to put the snow and that's where doing so with a snow pusher can be more effective than doing so with a snow plow. And so basically with a pusher or a plow, even on a long driveway, you still have to push that snow straight. You're gonna have wind rows with either piece of equipment. And so where that efficiency 
comes into place is with something like a pusher here that makes cleaning up collecting those windrows a lot more efficient. With a plow, it's windrow after windrow after windrow. I deal with it all the time when I use a plow at my house because that snow never is trapped by the far end of the plow. It's gonna constantly spill over. You have to go back through and make one more cleanup pass if you want to. However, smaller volumes of snow that windrows normally are, they're captured right inside this box here on a pusher. So you, you collect it, you move it where you want to, you stack it up, and it's done. And again, bear in mind with smaller machines, maybe not so much once you get to an L6060 or into a utility tractor, but those lighter machines are gonna have a challenge steering while you're pushing all that snow with a snow plow. So if you can keep that load centered with a snow pusher, it could make your life a little bit more enjoyable as you go through the winter time. Now, if we're talking about larger areas, maybe it's a lot like what I have here at the shop, maybe it's at home, you've got a garage here, maybe an extra garage or a barn or just a big landing area. Snow pushers really are the tool to use. They're gonna be a lot more efficient at trapping that snow, minimizing the amount of passes. You get the job done a lot quicker with a piece of equipment like this. Now, as you might be able to tell, I'm a snow pusher guy. I just really love them. And again, for me, it's all about simplicity and you can't beat that with a snow pusher. However, no matter what I choose to sell or recommend to folks, I want it to be a good value above and beyond everything else. So the Tower River snow plows, the HLA snow pushers, they just have that great combination of features, price, and quality that you just can't find with anything else that's out there. So I hope you found this video helpful. It gave you some good food for thought to help you make your decision if you're going back and forth. I know it's a big decision that a lot of folks are trying to figure out on their own, and this gives you some insight, a different perspective maybe to think about. It would really help me out if you consider giving me a thumbs up and maybe even leave a comment down below. Also consider hitting that subscribe button if you'd like to see more helpful tractor videos. And make sure you read through that description below. We have all sorts of helpful links down there. As you might be able to tell, we sell tractors and attachments too, and also work with other manufacturers where you can get 5% off with code GWT. Well, until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. All right, let's get going. All done for the day. We gotta pack up first, Rose.